Hello and welcome to another Game of Thrones analysis video with me, Joe Bruce. This week we're looking at how extroverts get out of trouble and we're also going to check out a few extroverts talking themselves into a bit of trouble as well. You can expect to see some of the more gruesome scenes from seasons 1 to 6, as well as getting psychological insights on some of the characters, which you may also be able to relate back to extroverts that you know in real life. We're going to be focusing on three of our favourite characters from Game of Thrones, Tyrion and Jaime Lannister and Prince Oberon. So let's look at our first extrovert preference, which is to have lots of interaction with different people. Tyrion is the obvious example of this, as whenever we see him he's trying to interact with people, play games, get to know people and break down social barriers. <laughs> Damn you woman! Are you immune to pain? Just used to it. Drink. <laughs> Let's play a new game. We see him do this repeatedly in many different situations, breaking down those awkward social barriers and forming relationships with people no matter who they are. Why don't you drink? Why don't either of you ever drink? Unsullied never drink. Why not? Rules. And who made these rules? Your former masters? Those miserable old shits didn't want you to be human. Have a drink with me. Tell me a joke, Miss Sandy of Nuff. I do not know any jokes. Grey Worm. Right. And in this clip, you've seen Tyrion actually has to work really hard in order to break down those social barriers, but eventually he gets there and gets everyone to be more relaxed and comfortable in each other's company. I make joke. <laughs> more jokes. The second tendency that we see with extroverts is that they will talk as they think, and sometimes they'll just talk until they have thought. I also use this next clip in my video analysis of introverts because it's such a clear demonstration of the difference in communication styles between introverts and extroverts. Daenerys returns to her city to find it under attack and in absolute chaos. Tyrion, who's been left in charge, doesn't have a good answer to this, but he tries to extrovert his way out of the situation anyway. Despite appearances, I think you'll find the cities on the rock. Perhaps we should take shelter. The cities on the rise? Marine is strong. Commerce has returned to the markets. The people are behind you. Well, not all the people, of course. No ruler that ever lived had the support of all the people. But the rebirth of Marine is the cause of this violence. The masters cannot let Marine succeed. Because if Marine succeeds, a city without slavery, a city without masters, it proves that no one needs a master. Fortunately for Tyrion, he's very analytical and very adaptive. So when he realizes that his initial approach has not been effective, he changes tact and goes with a more of a storytelling approach to try and influence Daenerys. Do you know his plans for King's Landing when Lannister armies were at his gates? Probably not. Well, he told my brother, and Jamie told me. He had caches of wildfire hidden under the Red Keep. The Guild Halls, the Scepter Baylor, all the major thoroughfares. He would have burned every one of his citizens, the loyal ones and the traitors. Every man, woman, and child. That's why Jamie killed him. This is entirely different. We're talking about destroying cities. It's not entirely different. Tyrion has survived and ultimately thrived throughout the seasons, being asked to be hand to the king and then hand to Daenerys. And in part, this is due to his ability to articulate his thoughts quickly and clearly to others. And this leads us really nicely into our third preference, which is to learn through interaction and engagement with others. I've spoken in other videos about how Tyrion probably wouldn't enjoy being left alone with a whole load of books. But what I want to focus on here is how Tyrion will probe and use conversation to draw out information in order to guide his thinking. Before watching the master at work, we're going to have a look at Jamie Lannister, who's also an extrovert, but who's less effective at picking up on the cues that are generated through the conversations that he has. Fancy word for a fancy man. I hated to read as a child, but my father forced me to study the books every morning before I could practice with sword or horse. Four hours, every day, 
holed up in the maester's chambers. I learned a lot of fancy words. I bet you did. Jamie seems to be so focused on his own narrative that he's completely missed the negative tone of his captor as well as the really obvious head shake. I bet you did. And because he wasn't paying attention to these social cues, he's unable to change his approach and this works out very badly for him. The North can't win this war. You're a smart man, you understand that. We have the numbers, we have the gold. Aye, you have both. Fighting bravely for a losing cause is admirable. Fighting for a winning cause is far more rewarding. Hard to argue with that. And I've really edited this scene down because it goes on for a painful amount of time, with Jamie and his lack of emotional intelligence continually pushing the wrong buttons, using his extroversion but not using it wisely like his brother does. So we'll skip to the end and see the end result of all of Jamie's extroversion. My father. And if you get in any trouble, all you've got to do is say, my father. And that's it. All your troubles are gone. Don't. Have you got something to say? Yes. Oh. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You're nothing without your daddy. Your daddy ain't here. Never forget that. Yeah, this should help you remember. And with that in mind, let's see how the pro does it. In this first clip, we'll see how Tyrion's approach to influencing the guard is ineffective. He's using the wrong kind of language, and just like his brother, he's not really having the impact that he wants to have. About the gold. Now gold. Now gold. Listen to me. Listen to me. Sometimes possession is an abstract concept. Ow! When they captured me, they took my purse. But the gold is still mine. Where? Where? I don't know where, but they free me. You want free? Go be free. Unlike his brother, who continued to patronise his captor, in this case Tyrion adapts his approach to something that's going to be more effective. Have you ever heard the phrase, rich as a Lannister? Of course you have. You're a smart man. You know who the Lannisters are. I am a Lannister. Tyrion! Son of Tywin. And of course, you have also heard the phrase, a Lannister always pays his debts. In this final clip for Tyrion, we see him using his conversational skills to work out where he is and where he might be going. Would you be so good as to untie me? And why would I do that? Why not? Am I going to run? The hill tribes would kill me for my boots. Unless a shadow cat ate me first. Shadow cats and hill tribes are the least of your concerns. Ah, the Eastern Road. We're going to the Vale. You're taking me to your sisters to answer for my imagined crimes. But in addition, he takes this opportunity to verbalize and rationalize his innocence. She's changed. She was always a bit touched, but now, you might as well kill me here. I am not a murderer, Lannister. Neither am I. I had nothing to do with the attempt on your son's life. The Dacca found... What sort of imbecile arms an assassin with his own blade? Can I gag him? Why? Am I starting to make sense? And there's so many more things that I think you'll find interesting to think about with Tyrion Lannister, but that's going to have to be in another video, so subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get notifications for all of my new content. And finally, the last preference that I want to look at is extroverts' willingness to take centre stage. Depending on the different characteristics that people have, this element of extroversion will be displayed in different ways. For Tyrion Lannister, it's more conversational, but as we look at Prince Oberyn, it becomes more flamboyant and more of a performance. And so finally, in one of the most memorable scenes of Game of Thrones, we see Prince Oberyn really taking centre stage. And this scene just would not be the same if he wasn't such an extrovert.
Have they told you who I am? Some dead man. <laughs> I am the brother of Elia Martel. I'm going to hear you confess before you die. You raped my sister. You murdered her. You killed her children. Say it now and we can make this quick. Unlike many of the introverts in Game of Thrones, such as Arya Stark, who I reviewed in a previous video, Prince Oberon wants this death and this confession to be very public. He had the opportunity earlier in the series to meet the mountain, but he turned it down in favour of waiting for an opportunity that was going to be a big public display. And so whilst Prince Oberon's character is largely defined by his extroversion, people seem to love him for his social confidence and showmanship. As we skip to the end of this scene, we'll see that ultimately, this very same extroversion causes his downfall. Who gave you the order? Say her name! You raped her! You murdered her! You killed her children! Say it. Say her name. Say it! <laughs> Elia Martel! I killed her children. Then I raped her. Ah! Then I smashed her head in like this. And it's with that graphic scene that we draw a close to this video on extroverts. By no means have we covered everything about extroverts in this video, so I may well do another video in the future, but for now let's just take a quick look at what we covered. Extroverts tend to enjoy having a lot of interaction with people. They talk as they think, they learn through interaction, and they enjoy taking center stage. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. Leave your comments, questions, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll be back with more psychological insights soon. No! <laughs>